buildings and uh, obviously uh, let's hope that they have They can't just do what they want. What we've had for the last 10 to 15 years is unlimited attitude. We can make money, we can do anything we like, we just have tons of time to do what we want without regarding the regulation or regarding the basics of how you run your business. Two suspects are in FBI custody after a truckload of explosives was discovered around the George Washington Bridge. That bridge uh, links uh, New York to New Jersey over the Hudson River. Whether the discovery of those explosives had anything to do with other events of the day is unclear, but the FBI has two suspects in hand, said the truck uh, load of explosives, enough explosives were in the truck to do great damage to the George Washington Bridge. Our apologies to our viewers about five minutes ago, but we do have uh, an established connection now with CNN's Deborah Fabry. The reports we're getting now, two or three men arrested on the New Jersey Parkway. Deborah, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Uh, that is the information that I'm getting from two sources, that there was a van either on the New Jersey Turnpike or the Garden State Parkway, and that it was near the George Washington Bridge. There were two or three men who were in the van. The van was pulled over. Uh, it is not clear why the van was pulled over, but when it was, uh, law enforcers found uh, uh, tons of explosives inside of the van. That is right now all I'm hearing, um, but again, two to three people uh, in custody, and we are trying to get more information on that right now. Deborah, I don't mean to put you on the spot here. Do you know where on the Jersey Turnpike this was? How far from New York City? Um, we do not know that. We are looking into that. There is one report that it was on the New Jersey Turnpike. There is another report uh, that it was uh, very close to the bridge, if not on the bridge. Now Fox News has learned some U.S. investigators believe that there are Israelis again very much engaged in spying in and on the U.S., who may have known things they didn't tell us before September 11th. Fox News correspondent Carl Cameron has details in the first of a four-part series. Since September 11th, more than 60 Israelis have been arrested or detained, either under the new Patriot anti-terrorism law or for immigration violations. A handful of active Israeli military were among those detained, according to investigators, who say some of the detainees also failed polygraph questions when asked about alleged surveillance activities against and in the United States. There is no indication that the Israelis were involved in the 9-11 attacks, but investigators suspect that the Israelis may have gathered intelligence about the attacks in advance and not shared it. A highly placed investigator said there are, quote, tie-ins, but when asked for details, he flatly refused to describe them, saying, quote, evidence linking these Israelis to 9 is classified. I cannot tell you about evidence that has been gathered. It's classified information. Fox News has learned that one group of Israelis, spotted in North Carolina recently, is suspected of keeping an apartment in California to spy on a group of Arabs who the United States is also investigating for links to terrorism. Numerous classified documents obtained by Fox News indicate that even prior to September 11th, as many as 140 other Israelis had been detained or arrested in a secretive and sprawling investigation into suspected espionage by Israelis in the United States. Investigators from numerous government agencies are part of a working group that's been compiling evidence since the mid-90s. These documents detail hundreds of incidents in cities and towns across the country that investigators say, quote, may well be an organized intelligence gathering activity. The first part of the investigation focuses on Israelis who say they are art students from the University of Jerusalem and Bazalel Academy. They repeatedly made contact with U.S. government personnel, the report says, by saying they wanted to sell cheap art or handiwork. Documents say they, quote, targeted and penetrated military bases, the DEA, FBI, and dozens of other government facilities, and even secret offices and unlisted private homes of law enforcement and intelligence personnel. The majority of those questioned, quote, stated they served in military intelligence, electronic surveillance intercept, and or explosive ordnance units. 
Another part of the investigation has resulted in the detention and arrests of dozens of Israelis at American mall kiosks, where they've been selling toys called Puzzle Car and Zoom Copter. Investigators suspect a front. Shortly after the New York Times and Washington Post reported the Israeli detentions last month, the carts began vanishing. ZoomCopter's webpage says, we are aware of the situation caused by thousands of mall carts being closed at the last minute. This in no way reflects the quality of the toy or its saleability. The problem lies in the operator's business policies. Why would Israelis spy in and on the U.S.? A general accounting office investigation referred to Israel as country A and said, quote, According to a U.S. intelligence agency, the government of country A conducts the most aggressive espionage operation against the U.S. of any U.S. ally. They can't just do what they want. What we've had for the last 10 to 15 years is an unlimited attitude. We can make money, we can do anything we like, we just have tons of time to do what we want without regarding the regulation or regarding the basics of how you run your business. Well, we have to know whether we've gotten through the worst, as you put it. I think what one's got to look at is you've got to look at very sound investments and you've got to look at companies and organizations that have really not uh, done some of the stupidities that have been done in the past and you've got to really understand the management. I think you go back to basics. Uh, you know, one was brought up to believe that one didn't have huge overdrafts, that banks were not geared at 70, 80, 90 times, which some of them were, and that in the case of investment you look at things that are worth investing in. Obviously the market will depend on whether it goes up and down with the attitude of the people concerned. But I mean, if you take raw materials at the moment, I mean, how much further down will oil go, for example? On the other hand, if you're very safety conscious, you hang on to your gold bars. After 9-1-1, 1,000 Middle Eastern looking Muslim men were swept into U.S. custody but the media kept quiet about 60 Middle Eastern looking Israeli men who were also taken into custody and held under great secrecy. On December 11th, Carl Cameron of Fox News ran the first of a four-part series about a group of Israelis who were among the 911 suspects. These detained Israelis failed polygraph tests about their surveillance activities against the U.S. and were caught videotaping the 911 attacks from different angles. Fox News also reported that the evidence linking these Israelis to 911 was classified, but a leaked 61-page report from the U.S. government's Drug Enforcement Agency revealed that another 120 Israelis, posing as artists, were also rounded up right after 911. Carrying counterfeit visas and green cards, the Israelis admitted that they served in the Israeli army in explosives, electronic, and military intelligence units. Did Middle Eastern-looking Israelis, who were detained as suspects after 9-1-1, steal the identities of the accused Muslims? The leaked DEA report revealed that Israelis with Israeli military backgrounds had posed as artists and lived on Sheridan Street in Hollywood, Florida, just down the street from Mohammed Atta and three other accused Muslims. On August 18th, one month before the 9-1-1 attacks, a New York Times article by reporter Sheila K. Duan described a group of four foreign artists who smuggled their way into the World Trade Center just months before 911. The artists occupied studio space free of charge on the 91st floor with 14 other artists and claimed to be writing a book called The Bee Thing. They also claimed that they constructed a temporary balcony on the 91st floor as a prank. Somehow, these so-called artist pranksters escaped the attention of the World Trade Center's heavy security companies. George W. Bush's brother, Marvin Bush, just happened to be the director of Securicom, which provided electronic security for the World Trade Center. By some mysterious coincidence, Marvin Bush's company also provided electronic security for 911's United Airlines and 911's Dulles Airport. So what were 18 foreign artists really doing living free of charge 
in one of the world's most expensive rental spaces. Many top engineering and demolition experts believe that the twin towers were rigged with explosives which caused the buildings to implode vertically in a typical controlled demolition. The reason the collapsing buildings looked like a controlled demolition, say experts, is because they were a controlled demolition. Photos and video recordings confirm that explosions occurred at the base of the two towers as well as in Building 7 before they fell. On September 24th, firefighter Louis Caccioli told People Weekly point blank, we think there were bombs set in the building. That claim was echoed by many witnesses and by firefighters who heard the explosions just before Tower 1, Tower 2, and Building 7 collapsed.